So before we get too much further into this, let's talk a little bit about some nomenclature. So nomenclature is the terminology we use for how we name everything. So right now we're going to look at what is called covalent nomenclature. So covalent, we have our atoms and they have their valence electrons. And so our bonding is done with the valence electrons. So the outermost electrons most easily accessible. So covalent, co together, valent for valent. So our covalent compounds are sharing valence electrons. Typically, this is going to be between two nonmetals or more than two nonmetals, but basically we're looking at things between nonmetals. So I've got a few compounds up here, CO, CO2, NO, NO2, SO2, SO3. So what do all those you know, what are all those components there? We've got carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, so on and so forth. So again, we're just looking at covalent. Our ionic and organic compounds, they have some different nomenclature rules. And in the coming weeks, we'll end up looking at some of those too, so that you understand how we put all of these names together when we talk about various different chemicals. So for our covalent nomenclature, what we're looking at is this general structure here. So we have a prefix, the name of the first element, a prefix, and then the base name of the second element, and then we change the ending to IDE. Okay, so typically speaking, we put the more metallic atom first, and that prefix is just going to tell us how many of that atom exist. The one exception to this is our first element. If there is only one of our first element, it doesn't get a prefix at all. So you can look here, my first example, carbon dioxide. Carbon, there's only one of them. We didn't put any prefix in front of that. So if it's the first element and there's only one, we don't use a prefix. Now our next one that is Br3O8 tribromine ox oxide. So now I have more than one of my first element, so I do indeed need to use that prefix. So what are these prefixes? Okay, so we have mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, and deca that we are using. And mono is only used for the second element because again, if I only have one of the first element, I don't need to use a prefix, okay? So you are going to need to learn the names of all of these non-metal elements and you are going to need to learn these prefixes here so that you can understand the language that we're speaking when we talk more chemistry, okay? So let's try a few examples. Okay, so I have Ni3. N is nitrogen and I is iodine. So I only have one nitrogen. So I don't need any prefix on there because it's the first element, okay? So I'm just gonna put nitrogen. Okay. Now I have three of the iodines. So our prefix for three is tri. And our second element, we change the ending to that IDE. So it becomes nitrogen triiodide. Now, one thing to notice, I did not capitalize these. So note. chemical names are not proper nouns. Don't capitalize. Okay, so chemical names, they're not proper nouns. We don't capitalize them. All right, so our next one, we have some bromine and some chlorine. So Br is bromine and Cl is chlorine. So I've got one bromine. So again, I don't need that prefix because it's the first element in the compound, but I do need a prefix on the second element. So I have five. And so you can go back to the previous slide and figure out what the prefix for five is. And it's penta. So this would be bromine. Penta. And then we change that ending, so it would be chloride. Okay, 
Now let's look at one where I have more than one of that first element. So N2F4, so nitrogen and fluorine make up this compound. And so we're going to get dinitrogen. And then we can think about four. Our prefix for four is tetra. And we change that ending to I, so it's tetra fluoride. Okay. Next one, sulfur trioxide, diiodine. pentoxide. So one thing about oxygen, so the prefix for five is penta, but for some reason the convention with oxygen is if there's an A or an O at the end of the prefix, we omit it. So we don't say penta oxide, we just say pentoxide. So we only do that for oxygen. And then our last one here, xenon, and then four again with fluorine, so it's another tetrafluoride. Okay, so we can go the other way around. We can start off with some names and we can figure out their formulas. All right, so I have chlorine monoxide. So there's no prefix there. So I know I only have one chlorine and then a mono for one. So chlorine monoxide is CLO. Carbon tetrabromide. So CBr4. Xenon hexafluoride. So it's xenon and then it's six fluorines. Diboron tetrachloride. So boron, two of them, and then four of the chlorines. Diphosphorus pentasulfide. So P2S5. And then tetraphosphorus triselenide. So selenide comes from selenium, which is SE. So I get P4, Se3, okay? So that is our covalent nomenclature. So you are going to have to start getting comfortable with these element names and being able to go between the symbol and the name and the name and the symbol and then start putting these formulas together.